Hello, in this video, we're going to introduce what's called the trigonometric or polar form of a complex number. So first recall uh, a complex number has a certain form. So the standard form of a complex number is a plus bi where here i is equal to the square root of negative 1. It's called the imaginary unit. A here has a name. A is called the real part of the complex number. And B here is called the imaginary part. So imaginary part. And you don't have to use A and B. Um, in fact, you can use X and Y. And so let's actually switch just to make the point. So let's consider a complex number X plus, and you can write it as Y times I or I times Y or YI. You can write it like this, or you can write it um, like this. Okay, it doesn't matter um, how you choose uh, to write it. I'll stick with this just to be consistent with what's up here. Okay. So what is the trig form of uh, a complex number? So let me show you. I'm going to draw a little picture here. We're going to draw the coordinate plane here. Okay, And say this is um, the x-axis here, and this is the y-axis here. Okay. What we can do here is um, we can take our complex number and we can plot it in the xy plane. So you travel a distance of x, let's say they're both positive, and a distance of y, and so maybe you're here, x plus yi. Now if this was the complex plane, this would be the real axis, and this would be the imaginary axis. Okay, so we're plotting it here in the xy plane. And now we can draw a triangle. Let's do that like this. And this will be the angle theta. And this distance here is x. This distance here is y. Therefore, by the theorem of the legendary Pythagoras, I'll call this distance r. And we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we do get a plus or minus. But it's a length, so it's got to be the plus. So we have this formula here for r. And you can do more with this. You can create more relationships with this complex number. So we know R. What about X? Well, we can use SOKATOA to come up with some other relationships. And I'm going to put all of this in a box in a minute once we get there. I'm just showing you how to come up with it, and then we'll do some, some examples. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is going to be Y over R. Okay, and that means that y is equal to r sine theta, because you could multiply by r here. So that would give us y equals r sine theta. Okay, and you can use cosine now. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the cosine of theta, okay, is going to be x over r, because that's the adjacent x. Same thing, multiplying by r gives us x equals r cosine theta. And you can also create a relationship for tangent, which a lot of people like to do. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tangent of theta would be y over x. I'm going to try to avoid using the tangent function when we do the problems, and I'll talk about why. Um, I'm going to show you a really interesting way to do these problems. So let me just give you the formulas, or the relationships. I'll just say formulas. And I'm going to put them in one place because this, this comes up a lot um, in mathematics, not just in trig. So x, we know, is r cosine theta. Okay, y is equal to r sine theta. And r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. 
And we also have this other one where tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And obviously in this case here, x can't be zero. R has a name, okay, R is called the modulus of the complex number. Remember our complex number here is x plus iy. Okay, that's our complex number. So the modulus of that would be this. If you think about it geometrically, uh, the modulus is just the length of this vector. So if you think of this as a vector, uh, it would be the length of this vector. Okay, that's the modulus. Pretty cool. So the magnitude of the vector, right, created, uh, of the vector with endpoint being a complex number. So what you can do now is we have x plus iy. And so what is the trig form? So basically you replace it with these formulas. So x is r cosine theta plus i, and then y is r sine theta. And then you can pull out the r, okay? You can factor it out. So you'll get r parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta, okay? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Some people give this a name. So some textbooks, they call this, um, so they'll, they'll do this. They'll say R is, uh, this is rather, this is cis theta. Let's say, what's cis theta? This, this is cis theta. Uh, cis stands for cosine I sine. You see cosine I sine. Uh, another way to do it is to know that e to the I theta is the same thing as cosine theta plus I sine theta. So later on, if you study more mathematics, um, this, is, this is how you'll see it, okay? So cis theta is something that's often introduced in trigonom trigonometry books and trigonometry classes that you take, whether they be in high school or college, um, as a little acronym to help you memorize it. But um, I personally think this is cooler. <laughs> but uh, cis, cis works too, it helps you memorize it. Cosine I sine, cosine I sine. It's pretty easy to memorize, honestly, and you probably will. Um, theta, we should say something about theta here. So for our purposes, we're gonna specify theta, at least for this particular video. We're gonna say theta is between two pi and zero. That's if we're in radians. Obviously, if we're in degrees, we'll say it's between 360 degrees and zero degrees. We'll include the zero, we'll exclude this other endpoint. Um, this is called the argument. So theta is called the argument. Well, the argument of the complex number. Okay, so all kinds of, of stuff, right? And remember, R is the modulus. So basically a complex number can be written as the modulus times uh, cosine of theta plus I sine theta, where theta is the argument. Different textbooks give different restrictions on this. So again, if you go further in math, always read the book that you're reading. A common one would be from negative pi to pi. Um, let's, let's go ahead and just uh, maybe do uh, a simple example, uh, and this is actually not an easy example. We're going to do a harder one, uh, and then in the videos that follow, you'll see uh, lots of examples uh, of going to polar form, harder examples as well. But let's start with one here, and again, this is not one that's particularly easy. And I'm going to do it uh, a little bit different than most people do. I'm going to show you how to do it. So basically, we have this complex number, negative root 3 plus i. And we're gonna write this in trig form or in polar form. So write, write in trig form, which is the same thing as, as polar form. Okay, so I always start by drawing a little picture or at least you know being aware of where it is. So this complex number, where is it? Um, well, if you're having a problem with the i, you can think of the complex number as an ordered pair negative root three, comma, and the coefficient of the i here, there's a one here, right? There's really an invisible one. So one. So where's that gonna be? That's gonna be over here, right? Left three, down one. So over here somewhere. So we're gonna be down here uh, in quadrant, uh, oh no, that's, that's a plus one. My picture's off. We're gonna be here in quadrant two. For some reason I was thinking it was a negative. So we're here in quadrant two right left uh square root of three up one and that puts us right here okay that's really important to know where you are so uh, we're going to come back to that later the next thing i like to do in these problems is find the modulus 
So there is a one here. So r is equal to the square root of, so x here, by the way, is negative root three, and then y is equal to one, okay? This will be negative root three squared plus one squared. This is gonna be the square root of, when you square this, you're just gonna get three. Square one, you get one. You get the square root of four, so you get two. So r is two, so r is two. Okay, that's the modulus. Most people, what they do now is they look at the tangent function and they do tan of theta equals y over x. You could do that, uh, but maybe you don't have, you know, the trig function values of the tangent function memorized. In fact, a lot of people don't. Um, so let's do it another way that requires minimal memorization. So it's kind of a, a really interesting method because it kind of shows you where the polar form comes from algebraically. So watch this. So we, we're going to take our complex number and we're going to set it equal to the polar form. We're going to force it. So we know it's r, parentheses, cosine theta, plus i sine theta. I think this is a much nicer approach than most textbooks, but that's just my opinion. r is equal to 2, so this is 2 cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this is equal to 2 cosine theta plus 2i sine theta. So this is certainly more work than just computing the tangent, but when you do that, you do have to rely on memorization, whereas this relies on just the most basic of mathematics. And now we're gonna use a very powerful fact. Whenever you have two complex numbers and they're equal, that means the real parts and their imaginary parts are equal. So remember the real part, let me go back up to the top and show you at the very beginning of the video, we mentioned it. The real part here is A and the imaginary part here is B. So down over here, the real part is gonna be this two cosine theta. So what you do is you take two cosine theta, right, the real parts must be equal. So this is equal to negative root three, really nice. And that tells you something, which we'll come back to. And then the imaginary part, two sine theta is equal to one. So two sine theta equals one. So we have the cosine of theta equals negative root three over two sine of theta equals one half. And this really tells you the quadrant in some sense, right? It lets you know, oh, hey, I'm in quadrant two, right? Because remember on the unit circle, cosine is the X coordinate, sine is the Y coordinate. So it, it really helps you. So if you forget to draw the picture for whatever reason, this service is a really good reminder, okay? Whereas if you just use the tangent function to, um, to do this problem, right? You compute tangent of theta equals Y over X. You know, if you did that, um, you would have to use some other skills, right? You would have to know some stuff. For example, if you compute tan of theta equals y over x, well, y here was one and x was negative root three. So you have to know, hey, what is theta gonna be in this case? So you really have to think about where you are and you also have to think about, um, you know, refer it's just a little bit harder for most people. So here, this is a little bit easier. Um, we know that the, for example, we know, for example, that the sine of pi over six is equal to one half from memory. You definitely wanna have those angles memorized from the first quadrant, in particular, pi over three, pi over four, and pi over six for the sine and cosine functions. Um, if you know those cold, you can do all of these problems. And likewise, cosine of pi over six would be root three over two. Except um, we are in quadrant two right? So that's going to be five pi over six. The theta is five pi over six in this case. Okay. So, and how do I know that? Again, just from the unit circle, here's pi. Think of pi as six pi over six. So the angle that's a multiple of pi over six that lives in this quadrant is pi over six less. It's five pi over six. The reference angle of five pi over six is pi over six. And we know that the trig function values of an angle and its reference angle are the same, except possibly there might be a sign change. And because we're in quadrant two, uh, cosine is negative. It's the X coordinate on the unit circle, sine is positive. So we know that this angle must be five pi over six. So now we can write down the polar form. Let's do it. So the polar form, 
write down the original question, negative root three plus i, that's equal to r, which is two, parentheses, cosine of five pi over six, plus, and then we have i sine of five pi over six. Really nice, and that would be the polar form. You can also write it as two cis five pi over six. Either of those are okay. So that would be the answer. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck.